Hello goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. If you're new here, I started an open source project for a pick and place machine which very precisely picks up electronic components and places them onto a circuit board. And over the past couple years, I started a company selling them. If you want to start from the beginning, you can click here to catch up. We are gearing up to ship V3 of the Lumen PMP in just a few weeks now, and it comes almost completely assembled, which gives us an awesome opportunity. We can test everything. With the bring your own printer kits, we can only really ever test all of the sub-assemblies, all the little components that we actually ship in the box, but we can't test them all put together because it only ever comes together when someone buys it and puts it together. But now that we're putting almost all of it together in-house, we can run it through its paces and make sure that everything is working exactly like it should before it goes out the door. To run all these tests, I've been working on a piece of software called Gundam. It's called Gundam because it acts like a little person getting into a big robotic suit that is the pick and place and like controlling things and checking to make sure that everything works well. It kind of makes sense. It was just a cool name and we needed to name it something. So now let's go take a peek in Ghidra, which is our production line, so you can see where we're making them and how the gunman test works. Let's go. All right, so now we are in Ghidra, and this is where most of our production happens for machines. We have two huge workbenches over here that both have a ton of these bins that hold pretty much everything we need to build Lumen PMPs. Each one has a different subset of parts that are really good for making different sub-assemblies that we have to make. So for example, we have all the parts that we need for like the tool kit bag and the getting started kit all on this side. So this is where we make those. And then over here on this one is all of our hardware. So all the nuts and bolts, and this is where a lot of like the actual gantries get assembled. And then this table right here is specifically for Gundam. So after a machine has been built up, it will go right here. And then this is where we actually run the test. This table, by the way, is from Ikea and it perfectly fits a Lumen. There's no place to put a computer, but it is the exact correct size to hold a machine. It's awesome. And then the workbench right next to it is for pack out. So this is then when we actually pack up the box and we put the power cable and the getting started card in there. And that's where we actually tape the box up. And then this bench over here is still pretty empty, but this is where we're gonna be doing feeder production. We have a dedicated laptop right here running Ubuntu that's going to actually be running Gundam in production, but right now I'm just using my laptop to develop it because it's a lot easier. All right, so we are all set up here with a V3 machine, and all I've done is connected it to my computer over a USB cable. That is how the whole test runs, is just interfacing with Marlin. So now I'm gonna go ahead and run Gundam, and it's automatically gonna scan for any ports that it finds on the computer that could be a machine, and it gives them to me in a drop-down menu, so I can just pick whichever thing is connected. It seems like we found a port here, so that's great. And then it gives me the option to pick what test I wanna run. Eventually, we want Gundam to support testing any product we sell, so I designed it so that it's very easy to just make a new JSON file and the test will be completely different. All you have to do is define a new JSON file that says what tests you want to run and off you go. On boot, Gundam will scan for any tests on the computer and give them to you in this dropdown. We're testing a Lumen PMP v3.0.0 right now. So I'm going to pick that test in the dropdown and I'm going to hit run test. The way that we order the tests, it works so that we start from like the most basic functionality of the machine. So if we find out that like a motor isn't connected properly, it's not gonna bother testing all the more complicated tests that require that motor to work because we know they won't pass. So we start from the most basic ones and then we cancel the test early if they fail. So we don't waste all our time testing tests that we know are gonna fail. So first we're just starting with movement tests. This is just to make sure that things are plugged in correctly. So I get a little pop-up that says it's gonna check for the X motor moving. I'm just gonna hit enter and I'm gonna watch for the X motor. Sure enough, it just moved, so that means we're good there. So now it's gonna ask if I saw it move, and I'm just gonna hit yes. Now it's telling me to check for the Y motor moving. Sure enough, move no problem. And then Z also looks good. And then we wanna check to make sure that the, both the rotation motors work, L and R. Beautiful. Next is checking for homing, so we're going to check and see if the x-axis homes correctly. The x and y-axis on V3 actually use the sensorless homing feature of the TMC stepper drivers. They pretty much just make the gantry collide into a physical hard end stop, and when they see the huge current spike in the stepper driver, they know that it's homed. It's a really cheeky way to do it. The homing test also kind of checks our belt and roller tension as well. If it homes too early when it actually hasn't hit the end stop, that's an indication that maybe we have our tension on the rollers or the belt a little too tight and it had a little bit too much friction getting back to its home position. So this is also kind of checking for us that we have all those settings set correctly as well. But let's have it home. Looks good to me. Now I'll do the same with Y. And then Z. Beautiful. So now we need to check the speed of the axes. This test checks how fast the x-axis can move, and we want it to be able to move up to a certain speed, but we actually want it to skip steps 
at a really high speed. If it skips steps at a too low speed, we know that the belts are probably too tight or the rollers are too tight. If it doesn't skip steps at a really high speed, it might mean that they're actually a little too loose and we're not gonna get really good uh, positional repeatability. So we kind of want this Goldilocks zone of it doesn't skip steps at a certain speed, but it does at a later speed. So first it homes, and then it starts moving across the whole X gantry at a whole range of different speeds. And I can check and make sure that when it gets back to its zero position, that it hasn't skipped any steps if it's actually back at perfectly zero. I spent a ton of time trying to see if there was a way that I could get Marlin to use its probe command for an X or Y axis without having to do some kind of weird cable harness bodgery. Couldn't really find a way to do it, so we're doing it a little manually now of just checking to make sure that it comes back to the position we expect. But if any of y'all have experience using Marlin to like probe using an X or Y axes with a TMC2209. I'd love to hear how you did it in the comments. I'd love for it to be automatic so that the test can check and see if it skips steps without having to have human intervention. It just knows, oh, hey, we skip steps early. And I haven't been able to find a way to do it yet. So I'd love any thoughts if you have any. And then we'll do the same thing on the Y axis. Looks good. And then Z. Cool. Now it's time to test the pneumatics. So the first pneumatics test that we run, just make sure that everything is wired and plumbed incorrectly. It's just checking to make sure that we're actually getting a vacuum from the left and right nozzle tips when we expect to. So this prompt is just saying, hey, remove any nozzle tips and feel for a vacuum on the left nozzle after you hit OK. Sure enough, felt the vacuum there, so everything works good for left pneumatics. And now we check the same for right. Also right. And now we get to run all of the vacuum sensor tests. So the way that I have this running, it is automatically going through and checking all five of the different reasonable possibilities that we care about of what is on a nozzle that we care about the vacuum value. So we start with measuring what the vacuum sensor value is with the pump on and off with no nozzle tip. Then we check it with the pump on and off with an N045 nozzle tip, which is the smallest diameter one. And then lastly, we check it with the pump on with my finger covering an N045 nozzle tip. And the reason we test the N045 is that is the toughest nozzle tip to detect whether or not we've mispicked a part because it's so small of an opening, it gets the closest to an actual complete vacuum when there's a mispick. So that's the one we really care about testing. If we can get an N045 to have enough of a range, we can detect it, everything else is easy. So it's prompting me to make sure that the left nozzle has no tip installed and it does not, so I'm gonna hit okay and it's just gonna run some tests automatically. So we got two values in just there. Now it's asking me to put an N045 on the tip. There we go, I'm gonna hit okay. We got those two values, and now it's asking me to cover it, and then I'm gonna hit okay. So now you can see we actually got five discrete values of what the vacuum sensor value is, which is fantastic. And then I have ranges that are acceptable for all five of those conditions, and we pass or fail that test based on whether or not they fulfill being within that range. Cool. And then we just do the same thing on the right side. Now we're gonna just check some miscellaneous stuff. So first is LEDs. After we make the ring lights, we actually have a tiny little jig that checks to make sure that they're all soldered correctly. So we really shouldn't have to worry about whether or not one LED happens to be off in the ring. We've already checked that for every ring light that's even entered this room. This is more about, is the cable plugged in correctly? And then we can check servos. I don't talk about those ports very often because we don't really use them as any default configuration, but they're enabled in software, they work, and I used them a long time ago for clamping down boards on the conveyor belt. So we check to make sure that those work too. And then last, we check to make sure that we can enter DFU mode. So Gundam actually will check and probe and see if there's any DFU enabled devices connected over USB. So I gotta put it into DFU mode right now. So now it's in DFU, I should be able to hit okay and it'll find that. Cool, and then we found DFU. So at the end of the test, Gundam takes all of the data that it collected about all the tests that it ran and the status of them, and especially for the vacuum sensors, what actual readings that it got, and it saves it all to a CSV file. And right now I'm having all of that upload to a Google Sheets document, which I know is not the best way to store data, but so far it's been working really well for us for the uh, pogo pin test jig for the motherboards. It's really easy to pop in and just see the test results for a given serial number, so it's been really nice. Eventually we're gonna switch over to like having a proper database for all this stuff, but for now, a Google Sheet works great. And what's great about this too is we can actually check the vacuum sensor values for those five states that I mentioned for any machine we ever ship based on a serial number. This test is gonna catch a lot of stuff that might have gone out the door otherwise. And the fact that we're checking all of these sub-assemblies together and working in tandem means we're not just 
checking theoretically how they would work together. We are literally checking how the machine will operate and making sure it's doing exactly what we expect it will. All of Gundam is written in Python using the PySide 6 library for the UI. I decided to add a UI to it because I could have just made it a command line tool, but in previous places that I've worked when there was calibration or testing jigs and there was some kind of command line interface for it, it was very easy to mistype something or use it incorrectly. A UI is very clear to understand what is happening. The PySide 6 library is awesome. And it makes it really easy to just whip together a UI. It was not hard at all. So I think it was definitely worth a little extra effort to make sure that it's just easy to understand what is going on and not have to figure out how to use a command line for running all these tests. You just open the app and hit run and off it goes. PySide is one of two libraries that Python has that is a binding to Qt, which is an awesome framework for like cross-platform UI building. All of the actual Qt stuff is written in C++ and it's super fast because Python traditionally is not the fastest language ever, but because the bindings go to an actual C++ thing, the UI runs super fast and is cross-platform and awesome. And then I can do all the other like logic stuff in Python. I also figured it was worth spending the time on making a UI because ultimately I want Gundam to support everything we ever make for testing. So eventually there's gonna be a pain in Gundam for testing feeders and it'll run through the feeders, all of the different tests for positional accuracy and communication and blah, 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 everything we're gonna test with them. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you wanna pick up a pick and place, check out our website. This guy right here, V3, starts shipping at the end of the month and orders placed now will probably ship around mid-October. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. How do you do the pencil thing again? Uh... <laughs> like this? <laughs>